fools! Bow before your master. I am Lord of the Definians, and I shall now give birth. <laughs> I can't do this seriously. I'm sorry. Hey, everybody. It's Chuck and Conroy. Welcome back to Moore's Splatoon. Last time we played around in tower... Or not tower control. We... Uh, yes, tower control, actually. Uh, you know, it was an awkward intro, and it made me actually forget the weapon that made me start enjoying tower control after I thoroughly despised it for several months after they came out. And I finally, finally achieved the level cap here. And you all get to see it. This time, we are back in Octo Valley. We are starting at the bottom and gradually working our way up. I mean, that one is very slightly below us. We are technically moving up in the world. So we got Propeller Lift Fortress, spin to win. Sounds like Wheel of Fortune, though, not when this poor slob is playing. <laughs> He's gonna throw a bomb and where's the zap fish? Uh, gee, I wonder, uh, what? what uh, oh, you actually can see it from here, dang. Uh, Agent One asking life's best questions, but I'm kind of glad that she said that so I could look around a little bit because this place is really cool. Just the colors, the bridge, the rock formations above us, the col- like, I think I said the colors twice now, but it bears repeating, the wave breakers. Wave breakers are one of those cool objects that you never see in anything that's not Japanese, and it's kind of a shame. So uh, I think we need to go up from here. You, Agent 2, need to do a little bit of brushing up on your cool things to point out, because Agent 1 beat you to the punch on asking where the zapfish was, prompting me to have already looked up and know that that's where I gotta go. You need to step up your game. <laughs> but seriously, just seeing a place this big and impressive, it makes me wish that I could say that if you could see it, you could actually go there. It, Makes me hope for a future Splatoon where you could maybe go around a really big open-ended level and complete multiple objectives with your various abilities, and gosh, if that is not just the public outcry over every Mario game that's been coming out for the last several years, I don't know what is, but here I think it would work really nicely when you got things like these rails you can go around on, bombs that do different things for you, you can make interesting stuff out of it. and. Just with how big and epic and impressive and just how much of a sense of scale everything kind of has, it would be nice. Uh, I don't know why I thought that would work. Uh, you, stuck in my ink, thank you. And uh, only one left. Aw, he's struggling for his life. Oh, oh he actually did. Man, uh, I gotta hand it to you. Even though you, oh, I guess I'm handing it to him, Never mind. Um, I gotta hand it to you. You hung in there for a little bit, buddy. I. I you know, I, I usually just kind of kill the Octarians without any second thought, though, but... Hey, you're doing a lot better than the Octobombers. <laughs> okay, uh, Octobombers, yeah. You guys. I know, ugh, these guys. How dare they want to be acknowledged by us and pretend like they are anything that we wouldn't kill in one second before even getting to see anything that they're capable of. Get another piece of armor right there, wow. They've just been throwing armor all over us lately. I'm not complaining, I'm glad I'm finding it though, but it's kind of weird how they're seeming to progressively get less and less faith in us uh, as we're progressing in our adventure. It's like those games that 40 hours in, they're still, every time you see a new puzzle type for the first time, they're like, oh hey, I bet you don't know how to do this puzzle. Here, let's take five minutes to show you how to do this puzzle that you already knew how to do from the first second that you saw it. You know, that. I don't mind it when games are easy, I do mind it when tutorials are that overbearing when you've been in the game for a long time. I think any Mario & Luigi series fan can understand what I mean. Uh, let's save that armor right there. I don't think I'm gonna need three pieces of armor in this stage though, but I might as well wait to see if I get hurt to this enemy that I've already killed. Okay, fine, we'll pick it up. I'll lug around one more suitcase on my back, and I'm swearing. Well, no, I'm not swearing though, but I swear that <laughs> Somewhere, like there's a cubby hole on the back of one of these. I think that's where our sunken scroll is here today, but I'm not seeing it. I checked on that pillar. I think I already, yeah, I already checked on this one. The one next to it, no? I guess maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Trying to make sure I'm not passing anything up though. Uh, there's a lot of boxes ahead. Uh, there's that one box that's on an island over there by itself that looks a little bit difficult to reach. How about we put our money on that one? 
Oh, and it's been a while since we've seen this. Uh, another thing that I kind of would like to see is vehicles, because you kind of get this thing every once in a while where you can unleash the heavy octillery, as I called it. And hey, I was actually exactly right for where it was going to be at just grasping at straws. Uh, you, oh. Hit that. Let's hit you again. And now you should be, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it one more. I'm not gonna chance that. Now you should be close enough for me to hop aboard. It's quiet, too quiet. Here they come. I'm just too overcome with the scenery to really care too much though, but yeah, they're ambushing us with octocopters. Um, I don't often say things like this, but I think you've been better off ambushing us with those guys. <laughs> I mean, having bombs thrown at you would have been a little bit more threatening, but I don't know what it is. Octobombers are just no threat whatsoever for whatever reason. Oh, I thought I missed that for a second. I think I didn't. I was like, wait, crap, I had to make a jump from on the moving platform, didn't I? Nope, we got it. We got this one egg. You boxes are loafing. You also gotta step up your game. And then, Octolings, two of them. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? There's Octolings. Uh, no, that's not gonna occur. Wait, are they, are they not spawned in yet? Agent One is just too fast for even the Octolings to know that they exist. Seriously, like, they're not here. They really aren't. Yeah, they hadn't even spawned in yet. <laughs> Agent One, I think you're being a little bit too helpful. Uh, yeah, they have kelp on their heads. We've heard about these elite Octolings earlier. They are stronger, they do take more gunfire, they're just generally tougher enemies. We did actually lose one piece of armor right there, but <laughs> we immediately got it back, so it didn't matter in the slightest, and we also didn't need to use this bubbler. Would be kinda nice if you had trouble with them though, but I think we're good. We're gonna get our bonus, here it is. Bing. Before the Great Turf War, there were amicable relations between the Inklings and the Octarians. They couldn't have dreamed that rising sea levels would force them to battle fiercely over the remaining territory. I'm sorry, I don't want to make a joke about that. It's actually kind of sad that that happened. Hmm, you know, you're pretty alright, Agent 3. Well, uh, I think those are the words to describe you, Agent 2, pretty all right. Your advice does not live up to that of Agent 1. I'm sorry, you're a little bit too slow on the uptake, but maybe with enough training, you too can be... half as good as that jump. <laughs> Let's go to Inkopolis Plaza like we typically do after we finish up in Octa Valley. It's not even Thanksgiving yet, buddy. Well... Since we talked about the Squid Girl crossover earlier, I better know what you're thinking. He's running out of topics. There's not a whole lot we haven't seen yet. We've seen the vast majority of what you can do in Splatoon, and there's not a lot of cool topics left. You're grasping at straws, you're at the end of your rope, you're getting your head bit off, and you're being made to wet your pants in front of Mayor Perkle. That escalated quickly. Well, none of those things are true. And I hope none of them will be true in the future. This is Splatnet. This is a website that you can access. Its official site is splatoon.nintendo.net. If you have a Nintendo Network ID, you can sign in on this on your phone or on your computer or on any other sort of thing that has a web browser on it, quite frankly. What is Splatnet and why would you want to link it to your Nintendo Network ID? It's a pretty helpful utility. You can see what friends are online playing Splatoon without even needing to be near your Wii U or being on the game or anything like that, starting it up, none of that. You just go to a website, you check it, you can see which people on your friends list are currently online. Not only that, but you can see what equipment your friends are using to get ideas for your own builds. And it even has a ranking list for you and your friends. This is not like, oh, you're an S rank, well, you get to talk down to me because I'm lowly C minus. No, not that at all. These are weekly rankings that keep track of how many points you have earned total across all of your games in Splatoon. You can see how you stack up to your friends, who's playing the most, who is doing the best, that kind of stuff. I've also known people to 
uh, have their own private competitions with their friend list where, the, where they're like, hey, if you're the top ranked person this week, then, you know, I'll send you, I don't know, a game on the eShop or something like that. It's kind of neat. These are all nice utilities, and you can even link it to your social media so that when you're on Splatoon, it'll automatically tweet out to your followers that you are on the game. Can be rather helpful. I personally don't like doing that because there's times where I get on for like one game and then I have to get back off because of whatever, and I don't really like doing that though, but it's there if you want it. Now, all of that sounds peachy keen, I'm sure. Or whatever you say where you're from, because I don't think anyone actually says that anymore. <laughs> But the big reason why you would want to get on Splatnet, it will tell you what the current map rotation is and mode rotation without having to turn the game on, but it will even tell you what the future rotations today are going to be. So you can plan your day around that, make sure that you have free time when the map and mode rotation that you like is on there. There's no more getting on and going, I don't want to play more eight towers again. It's been in the last three rotations, have mercy. No more of that. Just get on Splatnet, make sure that you remember what times the maps are going to rotate for your time zone, and just keep at it like that. Now that we're all done there, it is time, once again, for the weapon of the day. I'm sure at some point in your life when you were new to shooters and you couldn't stop losing, you said to yourself for a moment, why can't there be a long range weapon that does lots of damage and shoots really, really fast? Well, this is as close as you're gonna get, Splattershot Pro. Its range falls between the splatter shots and the Jet Squelcher, making it one of the longer range shooters out there. In fact, its range is equal to the Dual Squelcher. Each shot is 42 base damage and the rate of fire is at least decent. Its shots are accurate, so it's able to reliably engage in combat from a good distance. With such a great combination, it's got to have at least some type of weakness, and that is that this entire set is very ink hungry. You will need to reload all the time. While this is a shooter, and long range on a shooter usually means a considerable drop in accuracy, this is one of the most consistent shooters out there as long as you aren't jumping. So practice and find the optimal range for being able to land enough bullets to get kills. As an alternate use, it's a pressuring tool in splat zones and leaves weapons like the arrow spray without many options of fighting back. Its sub-weapon is the splat bomb. If it's not flushing out the enemy, it's outright cornering them. Using this is about laying traps, setting it so that in order to move away from the bomb, they'll be moving into range for your kill. Special is Ink Strike. Of course, it helps against snipers that outrange it, in addition to what was said earlier, it makes this set even better in splat zones than it already was. Though the Splattershot Pro doesn't have the best turf coverage in the world because its movement speed is pretty slow while strafing, the Ink Strike is fairly affordable. What? We went from you saying it with me to saying it for me, now I expect you to know when it's supposed to be said for me. Damage Up! Two mains and two subs of Damage Up will make each bullet do 49.9 damage. While it's not a two-hit kill at full health, it drastically reduces the time to kill someone with the teeniest ink on their tippy toes of their shoes. With such high range, it's great to watch for opportunities to use this in ranked where players are rarely at full health. I'm also going to give special attention to bomb range up. With so much shooting range at your disposal, it might help to have those bombs travel farther too so you can set up traps well. Your alternate kit to choose from is a darn cool looking weapon, Forge Splatter Shot Pro. This was the original reward for hitting the old level cap of 20 back before Sheldon's picks existed. Its sub is the point sensor. If you want to main the Splattershot Pro but you're finding it difficult to aim your shots from so far away when they take time to travel to your enemy, this set can be used as good practice. I'm not saying this isn't a good support sub and that I don't see good players with the forge, but I will say that it's probably the least played out of the sets. Its special is the Ink Zooka, an alternate, more aggressive, more cruel way of dealing with snipers which I definitely welcome. Though it's not played terribly much, you might like this kit because the point sensors are dirt cheap and it makes the entire kit a lot less ink hungry than the others. Now on to Sheldon's pick for this weapon, Berry Splattershot Pro. Has the same stats, except it has medium special depletion. I like this thing a lot. It's probably my favorite Splattershot Pro. Speaking as somebody who first reached their S rank using the vanilla Splattershot Pro. Its sub-weapon is the Suction Bomb. Manipulation is the name of the game. Use this together with long range because people will run from it. It might seem like it's just the same thing on the regular Splattershot Pro, but not as good because the Splat Bomb is cheaper and effectively does the same thing for you. But 
Its special is Suction Bomb Rush. Amazing turf coverage, prolonged pressure over which area of the map you throw your bombs at, lasts a lot longer than an ink strike. This special is on only two other weapons in the entire game, and this is by far the longest range main weapon to have it. That combination makes the Berry Splatter Shot Pro formidable in splat zones. On every use, it's almost impossible to not gain control of the center for at least a few seconds on maps that have one splat zone. Seriously play this if you haven't. I stand by it, I consider Suction Bomb Rush to be the strongest special in the entire game. It's time to find out the exact two maps that we won't be playing today, because we've already settled that we're going into rank, because how much I like this weapon and how much I like playing it in splat zones, and that's what the current rotation is. Go figure, it's like I know what the mode's gonna be ahead of time whenever it's a weapon I wanna play in ranked. Gee, I wonder how I do that. So we're not playing Salt Spray Rig. I remember learning about this place in school. Yeah, we studied it in Ink Battles 101. Our educational system greatly pales in comparison. I'm glad I got the reform it needed once the world melted over. Kelp Dome! I saw a Super Sea Snail in here the other day. I hear they love to eat kelp. I wish you could find Super Sea Snails randomly in a stage, but we all know it would get people just grinding them out all day and not actually paying attention to the fight, so, oh well. Now for the stages that we will be playing. Almost as important as what we saw. Hammerhead Bridge! This bridge will cut our commute in half. Great, I can hit the snooze button more times. <laughs> Mahi Mahi Resort. Remember when Judd fell into the water? Yeah, he's actually really svelte under all that fur. Well, um, at least he didn't melt under all that fur from touching the water. He fared a lot better than us squid types do. Let's go into the lobby and pick our equipment. That looks so foreign to see a new tab on a piece of equipment because I haven't worn it yet. Um, oh boy, uh, I kind of want damage up. We just got this from our last ranked battles. I'll wear it into battle, even though it doesn't have its three sub slots filled in yet. If they're blanked out, that doesn't mean that you don't know what they are. It straight up just hasn't even been rolled yet. So there's no benefit to wearing these unless you want to level them up. On the plus side though, leveling up and ranked, if we can win just one battle, we'll already get one of those slots. So I think I'm gonna go for that. I enjoyed the new tab while it lasted. It is the last time I will ever see it. This equipment set is far from perfect, but it's what I decided to go with in the end. I don't quite have enough damage up to hit that 49.9 damage per bullet. I'm going to be doing more like 48.6, if assuming that the enemy doesn't have any defense up. I have a little bit of defense up as well myself. I think that'll be nice to have, and I've decided to go with a bit of special charge up on this. The other two on this... on the, This shoes? No, these shoes... <laughs> Don't benefit me in much of any meaningful way, but I did want the special charge up, and it was just the best way that everything felt together while- Felt- Man, I cannot talk today. Great sign for the battles ahead of I can't even talk, right? Um, didn't quite fit together well, but I wanted to wear my new legendary cap just because I got it, and I'm happy that I have it, and I'd like to take it for a spin. Um, not literally rolling it, hopefully, though, but I'm sure it'll happen if I die, because, you know, my head will roll and everything, but, um, yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm very awkward. So... This is what I've gone with. I am... Cap'n Granny Sweater? Who... gutted a couple of clownfish and stuck his feet in their mouths? That's just how extreme of a Cap'n I am and what I'll do to you in the service if you do not scrub the toilets with your toothbrush! Let's go in. Ooh, when you're among the highest ranked elites in the room. I mean, we're elites to people who just got the game. Okay, I, I, I'm proud of my A-plus rank. It's not easy getting this far. Assuming that you're not leeching off somebody else using squad battles. I'm a big fan. I'm also a pretty big fan of you having a shorter range sniper than us and having stuff that I feel like I encounter pretty well. Very Splatter Shop Pro in Splat Zones, a combination that I'm a very, very big fan of. Very excited to be playing this here for you today. What I like to do is hang back, just try to keep the enemy stalled behind playing support in that sort of a way. It is a little bit similar to a sniper, but in doing so, I get to build up my special a lot quicker than I would do going down there on the front lines and probably dying a lot more. And from having this special, you'll see just how much turf I'm able to cover, how much I'm able to pressure the enemy team, or they can have a sniper, or sniper. 
There's a big difference between Sniper and Kraken. I really cannot talk worth anything today. I'm gonna go back a little bit, just gonna try to keep the enemy away, keep them from having control for long, using my long range to my advantage. I'm not the best at covering turf, but the fact that I'm long range really works to my advantage. If I can keep playing that, how did I not see you until right then and there? Oh boy. Uh, just gonna hang back, throw my bombs. Already got it a second time! That was the scope, wasn't it? Yep, it was. Uh, for one, oh no, I helped us to get control. I was about to say, for once I did that and didn't get control. I love whoever has the squid beacons on our side. I think that might be a roller. Uh, yeah, they're a crack on splat roller, so we got that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the stuff that we got. It looks like the other team got pushed back entirely in the time that I was away. Uh, go figure, it wouldn't happen while I'm on the field. Uh, their kelp splat, splatter scope is right over there. I can tell from that uh, thing they, from the uh, sprinkler that they just dropped. You can kindly die and not sneak up on my buddy there. That's what I'm talking about. You can just kind of be disconnected from the rest of the fight because the range is so good and just kind of use that to your advantage. Yeah, right there I flushed him out. He was able to take him out. We've kept the enemy away from this Kraken all this time. And uh, yeah, in ranked, I'm not totally sure exactly when the water level lowers in these battles versus Turf Wars. It seems to kind of happen just whenever it feels like it. This would have been happen nice that could happen a little bit sooner. Yeah, I don't actually know it. I'm usually focused too much on the battle, but it looked like it was three minutes and 15 seconds right there. It might very well be based on uh, the current score. I could see that being a thing that they would do. Uh, oh boy, oh boy. No, no, it was my blood. No, do not take it. No! We have such a wall to overcome. And it was my blood that filled up the zone and made it have to be... Uh, no, it hurts when it's your blood that is the difference that does... Oh, boy. Whoa, whoa. Um, I... I was going to say I'm getting out of here, but that plan didn't exactly work now, did it? <laughs> uh, they're getting a lot of points. Again, I love whoever is throwing down these squid beacons. You have no idea. Just If you've never played squid beacons, again, I can't stress how helpful they are enough. No one ever wants to play them because they're not a bomb or a su super mega invincible laser of death in your kit and a lot of people would rather have something of that effect so they feel like they're doing a lot more but no if you're bad at fighting play something play something with that on it it's just it's so helpful it's such a good utility it helps out the team so much more than you would ever know it's awesome uh, how how did that fill in as fast as it did like really oh they're totally gonna swipe it from under our noses Uh, that's that's a case though When you're playing ranked, it's nice not having everything decided in the last 30 seconds like in turf wars like it always is but Your trade-off is that you get that you get matches where oh man, we're totally gonna win this They haven't scored a point in us and we only have 15 to go, but they get control and you don't get it back It does happen from time to time my three-minute bonus that means nothing. I didn't get any experience for my legendary cap Go into another battle. Yeah, what now? You guys are the ones that have the five in your score and had a huge lead over us, but now you got a big wall to overcome. But it doesn't feel very nice. Ah, uh, double trombones. There's our map. I was, I'm kind of glad that we're getting to play this one, though. I always try to go with a positive attitude, but here. Well, okay, I do always actually mean it. I wouldn't say positive things if I didn't mean them, but still. And I just realized, in this cap, there is a hole for the tentacles on the Inkling Boy. Like, the materials actually rip to make room for the ponytail. That is adorable, and that is the first character design aspect on the Inkling Boy that I have ever liked more than the Inkling Girl. Kudos to you, Legendary Cap. You truly are a legend if you can make me say something of that caliber. Need to reload really badly. I'm kind of missing my ink recovery up. That is definitely a great ab Get me through a wall. Great ability to have. I almost had my special right there. We got squid beacons on our team again. I am a big fan. I saw a roller in there. I wasn't sure if it'd be the vanilla splat roller or the crack on. I was pretty sure it'd be the crack on though, but it's still good to know and Okay, yeah, you Swiffer, okay. Ugh, this is a bad start. This is a very bad start. Gonna take this beacon once again. I wish I could take the beacon, leave a beacon. We're kind of seeing the importance of them again right here. I'm kind of glad we're getting to see that, because just every weapon kit, I haven't been picking what's got squid beacons on it ever since the splat roller 
Uh, I think I've had a couple opportunities that I passed up. We haven't really had people on our teams with them, and I've noticed a pattern that whenever we have teammates that have beacons on their kit, they just completely forget that the sub weapons even exist. I know that sometimes you have that at the beginning of a day where you're like, oh crap, I'm just using my gun, what am I doing? But I've noticed it's been a particular problem with the teammates that we've been getting, and can we get in there and score more points? Come on. They're just utterly dominating us. I'm gonna, oh, what, what was, really? Really? I didn't see you when I looked down at the gamepad. I'll have to see like how obvious that actually was. I'm gonna super jump, it's a bit of a risk. These two guys are moving around around there. Got that, let's see if we can just play our distance a little bit. You can get my, oh, I can get your back too. I'll take care of that. I'll just want somebody's back being taken care of. That's the important thing here. Just wanna keep that there so it'll take him a little bit longer to get to me. Landed two bullets, but not all three. Come on, like seriously, is today just, <laughs> I feel like I can't catch a break today. This is our third game, and it's shaping up to be another curb stomp. I guess the first game was a little close, so I shouldn't say that they were all curb stomps, but jeez. I feel like I can't do anything here. And the sniper's got me. Screw you, sniper. Just... Uh, nope. No, 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 not doing it, not doing it. Okay, we're in control, we're in control. Just gonna swim over. You know I'm here. You know I'm here. You know I'm here, and I know you're there too, yes! Sniper that was pressuring me. I like how this is different up here. There's a lot of little differences um, between the ranked versions and the normal versions of maps, so definitely go into recon, see what they are. You can see that like the tops of those platforms are entirely different from how they typically are in Turf Wars, so there's a lot of things like that you want to look out for. And did we really only score... We didn't score any more points on them, actually, with what we did there. We can get control back. I just want to get off to the side. Apparently even that's asking too much. How did... I'm legitimately confused how that actually hit me. It looked like I was on the other side of the wall from them. I, I feel like I'm just complaining too much at this point. This, let's, let's not complain. Let's just go out there and let's actually do it. I'm gonna go off to the side here. I don't typically do that and you can know what gay... Day, what, you can know what gay this game was, reco this was recorded on. No, you can know what day this was recorded on. <laughs> um, do not make of that what you will, please. <laughs> okay, here we go. Take that again. I just know you know I'm here. Swimming towards me. Got my special. Maybe I'll actually get to, I don't know, use it this time around. It's been an interesting journey with my special today. You're stuck in the ink because we took control and I somehow don't even shoot you. Clever though, I, I give you points for style and hide in the suction bottle. I'm like, but no! Oh, if you lose control during a tie. It'll go to the side that already had that score before whatever team just tried to take it. I guess it's penance for that time that I won in the very last second though, but it still hurts. We can still win this. We'd have to keep control for a very long time because the timer that we have to overcome is longer than the remaining time. Ouch. This is bad. This is very, very bad. I I'm gonna super jump because we need a power play right here. If I get killed as soon as I land, we were gonna lose it anyway. If I don't, then I'll never know. Get off to the side, do this a little bit more. Uh, trying to keep people away, got you. Okay, finally took out that Octobrush that's been giving me so much grief. We are in control. Now it's just a matter of keeping it, keeping them pushed back, not letting them take control away from us. Seeing if we can keep the overtime going. We are still in overtime. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Go, 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 go. Got my unlimited ink, gonna try to shoot a little bit during my special. Need to be doing that more. Got 30 seconds to win it, come on. Trying to concentrate a little bit. Uh, you are up there. I outrange you, oh. Don't want my blood to be the cause again. Got time to run into me. Yeah, what? <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, they must be so mad right now. We got 3,960 points for that. It was about dang time. I can, okay, I did contribute to that match though, but wow, I died a lot more than I got kills. I was not at the top of my aiming or moving game in that fight, but we still took it. 
Quick respawn, definitely helpful in rank battles. Probably gonna be a lot more helpful in tower control than it would be here, but I'm glad we did it. Fun fact, working to gain the approval from an overweight cat is how I spent the last decade of my life. Now I get to do it all over again. Mew, your vibe is toasty. Here's a little bonus of 100 coins. Meow, splash walls create barriers of ink that block enemy attacks. But the more attacks they block, the quicker they'll break down. Only your own team's ink can go through walls, which is awesome. Splash walls require a lot of ink to create though, so keep that in mind. It's cool that we're hearing that now, because next time on Splatoon, the next weapon of the day, that tip is very important for. I'll just say that much. It's a weapon that was not popular at all, but some updates made it into a bit more of a household name. Also, those little pebbles that you are throwing at the back of my head really hurt. Please stop. Ow. Didn't work out. See you guys then. I gotta say this. I was originally gonna stop right there, but as a bit of an epilogue, and now that my blood pressure has calmed down a little bit, that last match might very well be my favorite match yet. I didn't play particularly well in it. I think I did do some important things, and I do think my super jump was a contributing factor to us taking it. But I'm so glad we had a game that had a situation where it shows what happens if you lose control when the current score is a tie. Then, after that happened, we had overtime keeping control for, like, a minute of overtime actually giving us the game. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just... <laughs> I'm still a little choked up over that game. It's it's awesome. All right, now for real. See you guys then.